Hi, in today's lesson I'll teach you all existing reading rules in Korean. We'll start off the general rules where I'll teach you how to pronounce consonants depending on their position in a word. Then you will learn about pachim and exceptions to the general rules. Just keep in mind that you don't have to absorb all this information at once as it's gonna be quite a lot. I hope today's lesson won't discourage you from learning Korean. Just don't try to learn all at once, okay? First, let's find out how to call each Korean consonant since I'm going to refer to their names throughout this lesson. The first letter is called Kyok, Nyun, Tigut, Ryol, Myum, Byuk, Shiot, Yung, Jiut, Chiut, Kyuk, Tiut, Pyuk, Hyut. Sang Kyok, Sang means double, Sang Jigut, Sang Byuk, Sang Shiot, Sang Jiut. You don't have to memorize all this right now, though it's easy to remember these names. Just pause the video and go through each of these consonants, read them aloud for yourself, and then play this video again. Okay, this is the full list of Korean consonants. As you might have noticed, some consonants are colored with the same color, which means they are subjected to the same reading rule. We will start with kyok, tigut, and pyeop. Here's the rule. When kiyok is placed between vowels, like you see over here, it should be pronounced as g. In all other cases, when kiyok is the first letter in a word, the last letter, or placed before a consonant, read it as k. So this is kagu, not kaku or gagu. It's kagu, okay? I hope you can hear the difference. Kagu is furniture, tek is book and moksum is life. The next letter is tigut. This word is tuda, which means to put something. It's also used as an auxiliary verb in some grammatical constructions to add a particular meaning to a main verb. So we read the first tigut as t, since it's the first letter in, in this word, and second tigut as d, because it's placed between vowels u and a. Here, tigut is the last letter, and here it's placed before a consonant. That's why we read them as t. Kot, patchim. And the last consonant that follows the same rule is pyup. This word is pronounced as pabo, not papo or babo, okay? The second word is pap, and the last one is mopsi. When ryul is a first letter in a word or placed between vowels, it should be read as soft r, not like in Spanish, Russian or Arabic. And when it's the last letter in a word or placed right before a consonant, it should be read as l. Some people, especially native speakers, may argue that ryul produces just one sound which is something closer to l. If it was true, then this word should have been pronounced as nalul, which is wrong pronunciation. First and second riol produce two different sounds. First is more close to r, and the second is more close to l. Take a look at these two examples. Here and here, riol is placed before a consonant, digut and yung. But here riol is pronounced as r, parayo, because this syllable produces a vowel sound, a. And when ryul is placed between vowel sounds, it's pronounced as r, okay? I hope you're not confused. If you do, please watch this again. The next letters are xiot and sang xiot. I have already explained how to read them in the previous lessons, but let me do this again. So these two letters should be pronounced as s or sh depending on what kind of vowels comes after them. If it's a vowel from the first column, then read them as s. And if it's from the second column, it should be read as sh. Let's take a look at a few examples. Saram, which means person. 
Shigan, not Sigan. I have seen foreigners who say Sigan, but it sounds like if your name were Sean and someone would call you Son, or instead of Shakira, someone would call her Sakira. These two letters sound differently. The next word is Sida, which means to write or to use or to wear a hat, for example. And this is Naishi, which means weather. The last consonant is Yung. I have already explained how to read it twice, if I'm not mistaken, in the previous lessons. So I'm not gonna go into details. What you need to know here is when Yung is placed right before a vowel, just ignore it as it doesn't produce any sound. And when it's the last letter in a syllable, then read it as ng. Kong kang. This word is il kong kangaji. So we are done with general rules and now I will briefly explain to you what is pachim. Then we will come back to this topic and we'll talk about exceptions to these general rules. Pachim is a final consonant or consonants in a syllable block. From now on, in this lesson, there will be a bunch of things that you will just have to memorize. But you know what? You don't have to remember all this at once. If you forget any of these following rules, you can watch this video again anytime in the future. You see these words? Can you make a guess where is Pachim I was talking about? Pause the video and try to find them. Just to give you a hint, there are eight pachims. These are pachims. Some have just one consonant and other have two consonants. Pachims that have two consonants are called kyopachim. When pachims are followed by a consonant sound, something happens to them. They are either pronounced differently for example, this word, itta, not ista. Or one of two letters is not pronounced, like here, opta, shiot is not pronounced. But when pachim is followed by vowel sounds, nothing happens. Isoyo, opsayo. Here is the full list of pachims that are subjected to changes. When these pachims are followed by a consonant, the first letter should be read. And when these pachims are followed by a consonant, read the second letter. And when it happens to this, either the first or second letter should be read. It's not optional. You need to know for sure where you should read the first letter and where the second letter. It looks complicated, but to your luck, there are not so many words in Korean language that have this kind of pachim. And these pachims are more common when xiot, sang xiot, jiut, jiut, or tiud is followed by consonants, they should be read as t. Take a look at these examples. Anta, anjayo. Opta, opsayo. Sam, salmi. Itta, isayo. Here pachims are followed by consonants, that's why we applied this rule. And here pachims are followed by a vowel sound, that's why we haven't made any changes. Now let's get back to the previous topic and talk about exceptions to the general rules. The first letter is kyok and all pachims that produce the same or a similar sound as k. When kyok is followed by one of these five consonants, they should be read as follows. Here are a few examples. Mokkongan, Shiktang, Kukpi, Hakseng, Hakta. When kyok is followed by Nyun, Mium, or Riol, then kyok should be pronounced as yung, and if it's followed by riol, then riol also changes to nyun. Look at this example. It's pronounced as 
song new not sok ru or song ru so read this as ing nun puang mun tang nun and when kyok is surrounded by hyut either from the left or the right side kyok should be pronounced as k hakwe chokke that's all for kyok let's move on to the next letter which is nyun when nyun is surrounded by riol nyun changes to riol silang sollal the next letter is tigut and all its patchims when tigut is followed by one of this Uh, five consonants this five consonants should be read like this tekul patta kotong katta and when tigut is followed by niun or mium tigut should be pronounced as niun pannen innen kunada myeonmyeong onman when tigut is surrounded by hyut read tigut as t sil ta and the last exception for tigut is this when tigut is followed by a syllable e read them as g ku ji the next letter is riol when it's placed after mim or ing you should read riol as n um nyosu dung nok not umrasu or tingrok okay next letter is pub and all its patchims when pub is followed by one of these five consonants this five consonants should be read like this shipun chapchi popte and when it's followed by nyun or mim it's pronounced as m That's why we say 감사합니다 instead of 감사합니다. The other two examples are 없는 집마다. The next exception is when peep is followed by 리얼, both letters change in sound. Peep produces m sound and 리얼 produces n sound. We write 입력 but read it as 입력. And the last exception for peep is this. When followed by hyut, read it as p, e pak. The next letter is jyut. When surrounded by hyut, it should be read as chyut. An chida, krochi. The next consonant is tyut. When followed by the syllable e, read them as chi. And finally, the last exception for letter hyut. Hyut in general should be read very softly in Korean language. You actually hardly can hear h sound in Korean language, especially when it's preceded by nyun, myum, ying, or riol, or surrounded by vowel sounds. Chona, kyoron, irada, joayo. In all these examples, I'm not even sure if you heard me saying H. Well, that's all for today. Once again, you don't have to learn these rules all at once. I just gave this information to you for future use. You can watch this video again whenever you need. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Have a wonderful day and see you next time.